Welcome to Exploring Santa Cruz. I'm your host, Jean Kratzer, and my guest today is Omar Guzman. Welcome, Omar. Morning, Jean. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Let me just say that Omar is a very valued member of the KSQD team. He's a member of our board. He is a member of the next generation that's going to keep this station alive. And he also does, on a daily basis, a lot of the nuts and bolts practical work that we need in order for everything to go smoothly. So we all value Omar very much. But I've invited him here today not to talk about the nuts and bolts of K-Squid, but to talk about growing up in Watsonville. And you did grow up in Watsonville, am I right? That's right, Jean. I uh, grew up in Watsonville. I was born September 20th, 1990. And your parents, were they born there as well? No. So they are both immigrants. They are both from Mexico and uh, specifically Michoacan. I think you told me that your mother has a great many family members also in Watsonville. She does. She is, I believe it's one of 10. Pretty neat when you think about how when there's a party or when there's an event, they can all come. It's not that they have to travel miles and miles to come to a wedding. And since we recently got married, all of my uncles were there. That surely made a huge difference growing up. It did, yeah. To this day, we still have some parties that we go to, and we typically get connected when my grandma's here, and that's when everyone comes. I have nine uncles and aunts, but each of them have their own kids, so our family is pretty huge. One of the reasons that I asked you to come and tell us about growing up is because you grew up in Watsonville. Now, we're a station that unfortunately doesn't yet have a broadcast footprint that reaches very far into Watsonville. But Watsonville is a really significant part of Santa Cruz County, which we as a station want to serve. I have the impression that a lot of people who live in Santa Cruz County don't really know Watsonville. Yeah, there's always a a misconception of Watsonville, unfortunately, that it's unsafe that it's um it's really that a lot of people think of it that it's unsafe you know which is unfortunate because it's not uh, i was explaining to you earlier that i feel very safe in watsonville so much so that it's created a bubble for me where when i go somewhere else i don't feel safe i feel so welcome in watsonville where i can go to a grocery store a restaurant and i can look to the left and i can look to the right and I see people of my color and I feel totally safe. And, or I can go for a walk at night and I feel safe. A lot of people feel that Watsonville is a place that they have to lock their cars or they have to make sure they're wearing a specific set of colors because if they're wearing red or blue, they're going to get shot or they're going to get mugged. But that's not true. Explain the red and blue because perhaps not everybody understands the significance of red and blue. The red and blue correlates to gangs, you know, um, and sometimes it's Norteños and Sureños. And so each of them have a color that they correspond to. Um, I think Norteños is red and Sureños is blue. And so people worried that if they wear red, you know, someone that's in a rival gang might confuse them for a gang member and walk up to them and start a fight. But that's not true. I mean, I, you know, wear those colors and I feel fine. People should know. You're totally safe when you go to Watsonville. And yet you're saying that's not the impression that people who don't know Watsonville have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It it baffles me. It really does. I don't know why people get that feeling, right? I don't know where that stemmed from. Maybe it's because there's a lot of Latinos that live there. And the conception is, well, Latinos are gang members. So Watsonville has a lot of them. So there's going to have to be violence there all the time. But it's like, no. It sounds like there's a lot about Watsonville that needs to be explored and clarified. Absolutely. You know, um... People come for some of the events that we have. I grew up going to the Santa Cruz County Fair. And a lot of people from outside of Watsonville come to that. Or they come to the Strawberry Festival. I love those two events. They're a great celebration of not only the Santa Cruz County, but specifically the Strawberry Festival of Watsonville, right? People get to come and see and try different strawberry items. But they only come for those events, and sometimes they just leave And they don't explore other events that we have. You know, we have a beautiful downtown city plaza. It's beautiful. It's mellow. Sometimes people are just sitting in their beds, just talking to their friends. And then during Christmas, you know, they make a big light show. All the trees are kind of covered with lights and you can drive around. And I remember as a kid, just my parents taking me to that and just how amazed I was. We have those, but not only those events, we have so much more. And 
Sometimes people just come for the big celebrations, but they should come and check out Watson for the food, our parks that we have, the slough. Sometimes people forget that we live by a slough, and that's extremely beautiful and well-preserved. Yesterday, I was spending the day in Watsonville, and one of the places I went to was the slough and the nature center there. Every Sunday at 1.30 in the afternoon, they have a guided walk along the slough, which is free, and it was fantastic. The people that were there in the nature center were volunteers there. They were such interesting and comfortable people to be with. And that actually was my impression of everywhere that I went in Watsonville was, wow, what a comfortable, mellow place to be. And I loved it. Yeah, it, it's so mellow compared to going to downtown Santa Cruz. It's a very mellow place and very friendly people, like you mentioned. And going back to the Elkhorn Slough, that's such a great place. My wife takes her kids because she's a teacher. Every year she takes a new class to that place to show them the, the slew because it's such a beautiful environment. Tell me about these other places that you mentioned that you like going to as a kid. Yeah, so since I live in the outskirts of Watsonville, I live by kind of Green Valley. So I live next to these great two parks, which is the Pinto Lake County Park and the Pinto Lake City Park. It's just one big park. Growing up, you know, it was like a two minute walk going to the Pinto Lake County Park. And it's just this huge lake. People go fishing, but there's a lot of ducks and geese. And I just remember just being able to walk there with my friends and sometimes when I was younger, go to a party there. And it's a resource that not a lot of people go to. When you need to take time just to reflect on yourself or just time for yourself, it's a great park because you can just sit on a bench and just look at a lake. And I just remember sometimes taking my friends there or taking my girlfriend there and just relax, you know, and just not care about what's going on in the world. Eventually, we added another park, the city park, and that's more of a trail. I wasn't able to drive. I would just go run and, and I would go to that park. And I just remember people would play there on the weekend soccer. But each little spot has like a little fire pit where you can grill. And so a lot of families would come and it's such a heavily used park. It's so great to go there. And you see on the weekends, it's never empty. There's so many families there. And, you know, there was this huge rave, I think maybe in the early 2000s where someone thought they saw an image of uh, the Virgin Mary. And so that a certain spot became sacred. You know, families would go to look at this tree bark that kind of reflected the Virgen de Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And so people would come and they would bring candles and they would bring flowers. And I just remember walking there and sometimes seeing people praying. Up until now, I some people still bring flowers to that area. I, I think I mentioned to you, and I think I remember showing this to my girlfriend at the time, my wife, Taylor's Hot Dogs. That's in this downtown Sydney Plaza. Yeah, tell me about Taylor's Hot Dogs. <laughs> it's like a hot dog stand right next to the city plaza. And it's famous because they used to be, I think, like 25 cents or a dollar a hot dog. <laughs> They're not the best hot dogs, but <laughs> I remember like my dad taking me there and my brothers. And I remember it just made such an impact that when I started dating my girlfriend, Rebecca, that I took her there. It was one of the first places that I kind of took her to show off, like, aren't these hot dogs great? But they weren't as great as I remember them as a kid. <laughs> I just remember that place being so important because sometimes my dad would have time to take us there. And the other places is, of course, the Santa Cruz uh, County Fair. Since we live kind of close to that area, every time the county fair happens, I can hear the roarings of the cars I can hear from my house. I can hear the the engines revving, the cheering, and they have car races. And sometimes I think now they do like monster truck shows and stuff. But I remember when I was a kid in elementary, we were able to go. They took us as a field trip and we got to explore the many things the county fair had, like the animal farm. Uh, and I just remember that place so well just because how every year I would go. And just because of the jingle it had, it was always like, the Santa Cruz County Fair. And they would like do like a little <laughs> jingle. And like that has stuck to me until now. You know, I always bring it up when it's the Santa Cruz County Fair. I always sing that little part to my wife. Watsonville is also a place that has access to the ocean, to Monterey Bay. There's the dunes. Is that anything that you had a connection to or did you not go to the beach? We used to go to the Pajaro Dunes uh, since my mom used to work at the dunes. She used to uh, do um, house cleaning. And mm -hmm. so the dunes have like um, rentals. 
So she would clean there. And so she was familiar with the ocean. So we would go all the time to the beach. But eventually my brother was drowning once. <gasps> and so my dad tried to go tried to go help him, save him. And then he got stuck. I think it was like a whirlpool type of thing where it was dragging both of them down. Yeah. And so this person that we didn't know who it was swam there and was able to drag both of them. Thank goodness. And and after that, we never went to the beach again as a family because of that reason. Of course. Um, we never went back. We were talking a little bit about the economy in Watsonville. And, of course, a really major part of the Watsonville economy is agriculture. And that includes not just the people who own the fields, but the people who work in the fields. When you were growing up, did you have any contact at all with these people? Yeah, my both my parents worked in the fields. Um, you know, sometimes it was picking strawberries. Sometimes it was picking lettuce. You know, they. my family was very much involved in working that. And so did most of my aunts and uncles. They all started working there, mostly in the fields. And I remember, you know, the, the, the best part of that, you know, even though my parents had to work grueling hours in the morning and bending down and picking up all these things was when they would bring me, like, bring us a box of strawberries. You know, it was <laughs> yes. just like, a, that was very much a significant part of my life. You know, my parents waking up early, my mom cooking something for dad in the morning so he can have like a burrito or something to eat. And they would both be gone. And they wouldn't come home until late in the night, late in the, in the afternoon. And it was very much part of my life. You know, a lot of my friends had parents that worked in the fields. It's It's very... It was common in Watsonville, and you know, even where I went to school in the Mesty, right next to it was a field. You know, it it was very prominent where I grew up. It was a, a way of, for my family to have a money and income, and you know, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of grueling work. The Watsonville is very heavy in agriculture. What is your impression of the the working conditions then and now? It's not great. You know, it's it's not great, and it's a way for some farmers to exploit workers right because i think um some people try to protest to try to get better wages and better work environments because you know they're working there i remember sometimes it's hot during the summer and they're working there and they might get provided some water but they have to bring umbrellas or they're provided small umbrellas and it's not the best work and it's they're bending down they're working and people complain like hey these people are stealing our jobs it's just like hey man these jobs are a lot there's there's so much to it, you know, like waking up so early and leaving late, you know, going to schools, right? There'd be parents where it was the best place for kids to go because they didn't have to worry about leaving their kids at home. The parents know that their kids are being educated and they're getting their future ready to go while the parents are doing their best to provide food and shelter for them. Even though they get to miss out on some experiences with their kids or not going to open houses, they're doing their best. And people are complaining that, hey, like these people are drugs. These people are, are bad people. But it's like, no, like my parents did the best they could and provided me as much as they could for me to have a better education, for me to have a future. You know, my parents and every other parent in Watsonville is doing their best for their kids. And sometimes they're sending money back to their family. Maybe their kids are not here. You know, and agriculture needs to change, right? Watsonville will always be agriculture, but there needs to be a way to provide better wages and unions. And Are there no unions? There because there certainly was a Cesar yeah, Chavez movement. I'm sure there's some unions, right? But some of the people are probably paid under the table, right? Mm. And they have to work those long hours and then, you know, can't complain. But again... My experience is different from other families' experiences, right? And and I don't want to speak for them. We were fortunate because my uncle came here before anyone else, and he established what he needed to provide my dad an opportunity to work along with him, and so did his siblings, right? But other people weren't as fortunate. And it's something to be mindful, you know, when you're eating your, your vegetables or your fruit, think about where that came from and how much work it goes into that fruit of all that labor that goes into it. Absolutely. And now that there is this whole situation with ICE, with the immigration and customs people, is there fear amongst the workers that they might be the subject of a raid? I can't speak too much about the workers because, again, I don't know too many of them so much anymore. But I know in Watsonville, when um, there was a census, 
that was so important to Watsonville because there was misinformation spreading that, you know, you're going to get your information and the government was going to find out you're illegal and deport you. And I remember Watsonville, you know, the city of Watsonville was like, hey, like, it's safe. You're totally fine. If you do this, no one's going to come after you. But I remember kind of sidetracking a little. I remember when there was like rumors that ICE was in Watsonville. People did not want to come out out of their house. Some people did not want to come out. Was this recently? It might have been a few years ago. I remember, and luckily social media for everything that some people complain about and not being great, it's a great resource for people of the community who are like, hey, I just saw uh, an ICE you know, immigration somewhere. Here's a picture. And they post it on Facebook and they share it amongst their friends. you know. And that's a great way for people to know instead of having to go out and being worried like, oh, no, like there's an ICE and someone's social media has helped out in that sense because people are scared. Fortunately, my parents don't have to worry so much about that, but I know there's so many other people that are not fortunate and it's a nightmare, you know, just having to worry about is my mom or my dad going to get deported or am I going to get deported? And it's something that Watsonville, a lot of residents in Watsonville sometimes have to worry about. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Exploring Santa Cruz on Case Good, 90.7 FM and online at ksqd.org. My name is Jean Kratzer, today's host, and my guest is Omar Guzman, a member of the K-Squid broadcast team who's talking to us about growing up in Watsonville. You mentioned Rebecca a couple of times, and I think our listeners should know that Rebecca, who was your girlfriend, is now your wife. Yes. And you've only just come back from your honeymoon (laughs) in Japan. Yes. Why did you choose Japan? Uh, we chose Japan because it was uh, such a different place from what we're used to. You know, it's a very different culture. A lot of our friends went and they thought it was a beautiful place, amazing food. And, and when we went, we realized the same thing, too. It was it's beautiful. People are so nice, polite. And I felt safe there. Growing up in Watsonville has made me very feel at safe when I'm in Watsonville. You know, Mm -hmm. um, I love Santa Cruz. I love California. I love Santa Rosa, where my wife is from. But when I'm in Santa Cruz and I look around and I don't see someone of my color or someone in my, you know, that looks like me, I don't feel safe. Watsonville, I feel so relaxed when I'm in Watsonville. And, And I felt that same way when I was in Japan. Felt so relaxed. I didn't have to worry about anything but when I came back, I sometimes I feel people look at me and they see my color skin, you know, and, and, and I can tell when we go to like restaurants, breweries, you know, I look around and I'm the only person that's brown. When I go to Watsonville and I go to Elkhorn uh, Brewery, there's a lot of people that are my color and I feel so safe. And I was commenting that to Becca, like I can go there. I don't like beer, but I can feel so comfortable there. When I go to another brewery in Santa Cruz, I can look around. And I'm like, I'm the only person here that's brown i feel people notice me and they start talking to me differently they they try to make you feel comfortable they just sometimes give you like the stink eye and and i can think that and i can and i know they're looking at me because i'm the only one that's brown and it's such a weird feeling because watsonville has created such a bubble for me Mm -hmm. where i can feel so safe so protective where i know if i'm going to go to a brewery in watsonville i'm going to feel fine I'm not going to worry about like, oh, here we go. Like, I'm going to have to be stressed out because these people look at me and they're already judging me or just, I don't know. It's a weird feeling. It absolutely is a weird feeling. I mean, I'm sure any community, if I was born there, to feel comfortable. But it's always comfortable to see someone else in your color, in your skin color. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait to leave Watsonville. <laughs> I couldn't wait to go to like New York or somewhere else and just never come back from Watsonville. But coming back, you see how beautiful Watsonville is and you see the changes that are happening in Watsonville. You see how downtown Watsonville has this new apartment complex and they're nice complexes for sure. They're absolutely beautiful. But when you see the apartments being very out of range and out of touch with the people that live there, Mm -hmm. it, it makes you wonder like, well, who are these for? You know, like it's not for the people that work here. You know the people that live here are people that can barely afford rent, and that yet these apartments seem to be accommodating a different group of people. It's great to have new businesses in Watsonville, but are they catering to a specific group of people that they hope come to Watsonville? 
as opposed to catering to the people that already live in Watsonville. Those little small changes start coming up in Watsonville. There's a, a lot of people in my age group and younger that are trying to not stop those changes, but hopefully change them while being open-minded to the other people that live here. Because if you are catering to one group and you ignore the rest, they're going to move out and you're going to miss that culture that was there. And the people that live there for many years, if they move out and you get this new culture that is just work, money, you ignore the rich history Watsonville has. As long as there's people out there, I'll support them, whether it being young, old, as long as they have the same mindset, maybe a little different than me, but their vision is to unify Watsonville and to try to find a way that both ways work. I'm for that. I think it's great that we have new businesses. It's great that we can have new apartments, but it's also being like, well, can we keep these apartments at a reasonable price that both people can pay? Your chosen profession, if I understand it correctly, is broadcasting. That's what you're now involved in through K-Squid, but that's what you would like to have as a full-time career. Yeah. So I'm the first in my family to go to college and to graduate. And that was a feat on its own. I didn't have someone to rely on, like someone where like, if my dad went to college, he can tell me, you know, college is going to be hard. You're going to get through it. I struggled with college at Cabrillo for quite a bit. And so I didn't know what I wanted to be. When I went to Cabrillo, I took some classes and I struggled and I couldn't rely on my dad because uh, he helped me when I was in elementary doing math and stuff. But once I got to middle school, he couldn't help me because he didn't understand, you know, the math equations I was learning or in high school. So he stopped. And so my resource of having someone to help me in my house went away. And so when I was in college, that definitely went away. I struggled and eventually I found photojournalism. And that was a great experience. And so eventually I graduated, went to San Jose State. And then I loved movies and television. And so I changed my major to RTVF, which is radio, television, and film. And so, you know, that my dad helped me as much as he could when they came down to helping me pay for some of my tuition. Once I graduated, I got my RTVF. And it's so funny because I took Rachel's class at Cabrillo. Ra Rachel is the board chairman for KSQD, and she's also <laughs> an award-winning broadcaster and documentarian. Yeah, she's great. She's amazing. Like I was saying, I took one of her classes, and it was a radio class, a broadcasting class. When I went to San Jose State, I got an email from her, and it was her asking, like, we're creating a new radio station in Santa Cruz. We're looking for interns. And that was such a great timing because at San Jose State, to graduate, you have to take an internship. And again, going to San Jose State, didn't know that many people, especially in my department, RTVF, I didn't know where to go take an internship. She sent that email, great timing. I responded. My focus was going to be writing screenplays for television. It changed to radio. Took some radio classes at San Jose State, and then I did the internship, and I got to meet you, I got to meet Matilda, I got to meet Ned, all these great, wonderful people, and so got to learn what the mission of K-Squid was. And I remember when she and I met, you know, it was so funny because I had just written a paper about how the local radio station in here say they're local, but they're not quite local. You know, they have some stories that they sprinkle here and there, but they sometimes ignore Watsonville. And I was like, hey, Watsonville's a great place and you guys are talking community, but you're not doing anything community. So I was on board instantly when she mentioned that. And so it was just the right timing. That's such a fantastic story. And tell me, what more do you think KSQD should be doing to include Watsonville and give Watsonville the place in its programming that it so much deserves? One of my visions is that hopefully we'll eventually have more bilingual programs. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's a Spanish-only program. Uh, and I know we're trying our best to try to accommodate those needs because again we're a community and we so far have done a good job of getting interviews from different people in our community or bands that were in our different community but we're ignoring another big pocket again right we we interview some of the people and the people that we interview is great but hopefully and i know we will we will get programming that is bilingual and not just you know spanish but other languages you know again santa cruz county is such a huge place you know and it has so many different pockets of people but watsonville is so near and dear to my heart that one of my goals and 
selfishly is just to make sure that we just don't ignore Watsonville. I don't think that's selfish at all. I think that's an important part of our mission. Yeah. So it, thank you for everything you do for that because you're the person who knows the most. I mean, I wouldn't say I know the most, but I'm glad that you guys have me here and that we have Watsonville in our minds to make sure that we just don't ignore them. Omar, thank you so much. This has been really enlightening, interesting, and you are just such an important part of the station, and it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you, Jean. Thank you for having me here. It was great to talking to you. And again, if people have any questions about Watsonville or want to know about stuff that are happening in Watsonville, the Watsonville Public Library is such a great resource. They always have some sort of event going on there or like Jean mentioned you know we have the Watsonville Slough such a great resource and we have great parks we have great activities we have a small little uh, farmer's market on Fridays there's so much happening in Watsonville and again if you're just curious about it just go to downtown Watsonville check it out don't be scared don't be intimidated you know Watsonville is a great place and I'm sure everyone will love it once they get to explore just a bit more I certainly intend to spend more time there exploring because just the taste of it that I had was wonderful. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you. Thanks.